Welcome to Victorious Living with Pastor Charles Cowan. Now let's join Pastor Cowan and the congregation of Faith is the Victory Church. This is Victorious Living. When everything's smooth and there's smooth sailing, when everything's going right and everything's going good, when all of that's taking place, what does it say? When life is calm, we may not think so much about keeping the foundation of our spiritual house strong on a daily basis. We may let it go. And so the message of hold on that we hear today, I hear, I hear it a lot, you know. Uh, I do hear it. You turn on your TV sometime and you can hear it there as well. The message of hold on, you're going to make it is popular today. Just hang on and you're going to make it. But now here's the question. How has God prescribed for me to make it? Now here's another question. Is God going to come down here or is God's influence and spirit, is he going to do all the work for me? It's so that I can make it okay or be okay. Is he going to do that? Now, listen to what he says, 1 Corinthians 3, 9. For we are laborers together. If you and a friend, if you are in business, if you, whatever it is, if you are in business and you have people working for you, all of you are laborers together. This is the way it is in the household of God. We are laborers together with God. Isn't it awesome when you think about it that God would so choose us like that? We are workers, laborers together with God. Amen. And so what does, it, what does, what does making a strong spiritual house depend on? Does it depend on God alone or does God do it by himself? No, that's that God does not do it by himself. God has done what I couldn't do for myself. God has given his grace through Jesus Christ to be my sin sacrifice and to shed his blood for the remission of my sins. I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that because God required a sinless, perfect blood, a sinless, perfect blood. Uh, Lamb of God, perfect blood to redeem you and to redeem uh, me and to redeem us. I couldn't do that. God did that for me. Now that I'm in the household of God, he's given me instructions of how I am to respond to him so that I can then win over all of the interruptions and all of the different attacks over the wind, the rain, and the floods. He has given me, you, the ability to overcome that. So God's not going to do it for me. He's going to tell me, I've given you the ability to do it. Now you go do it. That's the bottom line. Now you go do it. So if I don't go do it, what happens? Satan is getting the upper hand where my spiritual life, where my spiritual house is concerned. All right, how many of you are still with me this morning? Because these are important matters. Jesus is coming soon. He's coming, folks. I'm telling you, he's coming. We don't want to be like Noah and the people around him. Noah, God told Noah to build the boat, the ark. He told him how to build it and told him all of the detail of building it. But you know what the people thought about Noah? They thought he was a fanatic. They thought he had lost his mind. They thought that what he was doing had nothing to do with God. But what God was doing, how many years did it take him to build the boat? A whole bunch. <laughs> a lot of years. What God was doing, he was preparing in advance their way of escape. But what did they do? They didn't look at it like that. Those people, they thought Noah was one of those cranks from the hills or wherever he was from. They thought Noah had lost his mind. 
They thought Noah don't even know what he's doing. They thought, well, what in the world is all of that configuration out there that we see on the lot out at his property? They thought he was just an old man that was confused. An old man that was just following whatever idea had popped in his head, never realizing that God was making a way for them to escape. God was making a way for them to get out of what was coming. God has made a way for us. God has sent Jesus. He is my ark of safety. He is the one that says, come on in, come on in. That every situation, circumstance, wind, rain, floods, whatever comes against your house, I have come to be your way out of that so that you will not suffer what will happen to those who do not receive their help. So Noah was scoffed. He was mocked. He was made fun of. Amen. And folks, be careful because this day and age in which we live, that can be happening as well. And so uh, Paul said up here in this first Corinthians verse nine, for we are laborers together, hand in hand, we are to work with Jesus. Hand in hand through Jesus, we are to work together for the good of God's kingdom. Whether you pay attention to it or not, whether I pay attention to it or not, does not alter what Jesus has done for me. It doesn't alter whether or not that I have to work hand in hand with Jesus. It doesn't change anything just because someone may say, and I, I'm not, I don't know what someone may have said, but they could have said, well, I don't believe that. So what? That doesn't make it untrue because some person doesn't believe it. No, we're not based on our life on what someone else believes. We're basing our life on the ark of safety, on our Lord Jesus Christ, upon the power of the Holy Spirit and the authority of the name of Jesus and the unshakable word of God. I'm building my life, my spiritual house. I'm building it upon a foundation that no matter how strong the wind may be, doesn't matter how vehemently the, 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 uh, the uh, storms beat against my house, no matter what comes against my house, I, when I accepted Jesus and throughout life, I'm digging down and I'm putting my foundation on the rock. Let it rain, let the wind blow, let whatever come may come. But guess what? I am secure when my house is being built on the rock. Satan can't move me, demons can't move me, circumstances can't move me. Whatever he has to throw my way cannot move me because I'm built upon a rock. Hallelujah. I am building my house, my spiritual house on the rock. Not just one time when I got born again. No, no, no. That's the part I couldn't do. So what am I to do since that point of the new birth? I am to start building my spiritual house on what God's word uh, conveys to me. So he said, we're laborers together. We're hand in hand together with God through our Lord Jesus, through the Holy Spirit. For we're laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. Watch this. You are God's building. <laughs> Hallelujah. God's building. If God came down here and said, I, I'm going to build you a house. In the natural, I'm going to build you a house. He wouldn't leave the shingles off. Would he? He wouldn't leave. He, he wouldn't leave, uh, You know, let the rafters be uh, pencil thin. Would he do? No, no, no. He's gonna put the side in the brick or whatever. He's gonna put it on the side of the house. Uh, he's gonna make the porch safe. Come on, isn't that right? If he builds a house, walk into it and it is immaculate, uh, and all of the furnishings uh, that goes in a nice. Uh, expensive uh, mansion, you can walk into it because you know if Jesus built it, uh, it's built it like it should be built. Uh, and I know when I dig down deep, I know when I dig down deep and build my spiritual house on a day-to-day -day basis upon the rock, the foundation, which is Jesus, I know what? I'm gonna be a house that's built right. I'm gonna be a house that's pleasing in the sight of God, and I'm gonna be able to be a house that'll withstand 
every situation, in every circumstance, but I've got to work with God. So I think that's a misnomer. When I tell somebody, oh, don't, you know, don't worry, you're gonna make it. That's a little bit of a misnomer there because God didn't say that. Here, Paul said, we are laborers, workers together. Amen. All right, let's go then here. Uh, or let me say this, that when things happen in our life that creates a disruption, there could be, there could be numerous things. When things happen in our life that creates a disruption or when challenges, when tests, when trials come our way and the calm of our life is disrupted. You ever been there? Maybe so. And the foundation of our spiritual house is tested. We will be found on the rock or we'll be found on the sand. One of the two. On the rock or on the sand. Jesus is teaching this parable to show the importance of building and having a strong spiritual house in perilous times. Paul, uh, Paul's writings to Timothy, what did he say? That in the last days, in the end time, perilous, dangerous times will come. Folks, we're seeing it right in this very uh, point of time. We see it all around us, don't we? Perilous times, men, Women, the devil on the rampage, perilous times. They're on us, which is another sign we're closer to the coming of the catching away. Perilous times will come. Hardships will come against people. All of these things will assault people's lives, but I'm on the rock. Can you say that this morning? I'm on the rock. Hallelujah. Yeah, perilous times are here. We don't deny that. Our hand, our head is not stuck in the sand. We know that it's coming. We know that it's out there. But I have a greater promise. I have a greater word. I have a great prophetic word that if I'll build my house because I'm a laborer together with God, if I'll build my house on the rock, then no storm, no wind, no rain, no criticism, no whatever. Guess what? When the storm has passed by and when the wind has ceased to blow and when the flood and the rain has ceased, guess what? I'm gonna be standing. Hallelujah. I'm not built on the sand. I'm built on the rock. I'll be standing. Amen. It's like that song. I'm not gonna get into that, but I might. But it's like that guy bought that haunted house. Amen, he got this haunted house, it was a song way back in my day. Amen, that was last century. And so he bought this house and it was haunted, amen. And in that house one day, this, this haint that was in the house said, are you gonna be here when the morning comes? And the guy said, I'm gonna be here when the morning comes. I own this house, now I'm the boss. Ain't no haint gonna run me off. Ain't no demon gonna run me off. No storm gonna run me off. No, no, no disruptions gonna run, run me off. Hallelujah, well, I'm built on the rock. I'm built, my foundation is on the rock. Hallelujah. And let the devil blow. Let the winds blow. Let the rains come. Let the floods come. Let whatever it may come that Satan has in his arsenal. Guess what? I'm not on the sand. I'll be on the rock. When he's out of breath, can't say anymore, has to capture a new breath. Guess what? I'm still going to be standing. You're still going to be standing. But I'm working hand in hand with Jesus. Yeah, he's promised me that I will win, but I gotta take into account what he's instructed me to do so that I can win. Amen. Hallelujah. Won't you just give him a shout? You're gonna be standing. Say it with me this morning. I'm gonna be standing. Amen. When the storm comes, the winds come, the rains come, and all of that come, I'm gonna stand. Amen. I'm not gonna wonder why it's happening because I know it's the devil at work. There's something that the devil's doing to try to interrupt uh, my building. I'm working on a building. Hallelujah. I'm working on a building. Jesus is teaching this parable to show the importance of building and having a strong spiritual house 
in perilous times. Second Timothy chapter three, three verse one. Watch this. This know. It's interesting what this word K N O W know. That word. This word means to understand. It means to grasp the significance or importance of. This know also that in the last days. Notice how he was, the last days perilous times will come. Folks, we're there. We're there. I don't know how much worse it is in the future where the enemy's concerned, but here Paul told Timothy, he says also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. So the strength of the foundation of our spiritual life is revealed when interruptions come. Let me say that again. Let me say it again, please. Uh, the strength of the foundation of our spiritual life is revealed when winds blow, storms come, floods come, when interruptions come. The strength of the foundation of my spiritual life is revealed when these things come. Are you moved? Paul said, I'm not moved. You remember all of the things that Paul suffered in his lifetime because of the preaching of the gospel. He was beaten, drug out of the city, left for dead. He was, uh, of course, we have the story of him and uh, Silas in the Philippian jail. All of those experiences that he had. They tried to kill him, wanted to kill him. They thought he was dead when they drug him outside the city, outside the gates, amen, and left him out there. But guess what? They couldn't kill him because God wasn't through with him. They couldn't kill him. I'll tell you, when God is working with you, when God is on your side and you're on God's side, I'm telling you, Satan can't kill you. Satan cannot destroy you when you're working hand in hand with Jesus. Hallelujah. So Paul is telling Timothy, uh, this know or this understand to grasp the significance or the importance of, that is to know or to understand, that is to understand. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. That's not to alarm us. That's not, that should not be viewed as a dire negative warning. It is a warning that is in the positive where we're concerned as God's people. Amen. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. The strength of the foundation of our spiritual life is revealed when interruptions come. We all know people back in the day, they were on fire for God. Amen. They, were, they, were, they had the zeal for God. I know some, even myself today, they don't even go to church. Now, does that make a person complete because they go or don't go? Well, it does show a symptom. It shows a sign of something that's happening in that individual's life. Amen. 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 I, I take amens also. <laughs> they may not take cash out there, but I take amens. Okay. So the challenge to the cause of maintaining a strong spiritual foundation is the challenge that we face in this period of time. I would be remiss as a minister of the gospel if I swept that under the rug and did not bring it before God's people. I would be held accountable. I surely would. So our spiritual life is not built by wishing. Listen to me carefully, please. And don't misunderstand me. Please don't misunderstand me. Our spiritual life is not built by handing in a prayer request. We take prayer requests here. We pray for them. You pray for them. We are to pray one for another. Amen. But there is just something that I must take in hand to build my spiritual life. I can't depend on you to build my spiritual life. I depend on Jesus, whom I am walking hand in hand with to build my spiritual life with my fellowship with him on a daily basis, my prayer life, my faith life, my love walk, all of these things that I am working hand in hand with God to build my spiritual 
house. Amen. And so our spiritual life is not built by wishing or hoping that we are building on the rock, but by taking steps each day to maintain our spiritual house by working together with God. The foundation of our house will be revealed when interruptions, as I've said, come to our life. Success in life is a promise, but it's not a guarantee. Success has some guidelines that comes with the promises. Yes, God has promised us success, but he's also told us the steps that we are to take to receive what he has provided for us. Can you understand that this morning? It's up to us not to save ourselves. We couldn't do that. God, by his mercies, his love, his grace, he saved me. I am saved by grace through faith and that not of ourselves. I'm not working to get my salvation. I'm working out my salvation with fear and trembling. Amen, the Bible says. All right, here, here another, we've, got one, we've got another minute or two here. Exodus chapter six. Let me read this to you. Exodus chapter six, verse eight. This is what God said to Israel when they were in Egyptian bondage 400 years. And I will bring you into the land and I will bring you into the land which I have swore to give Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I will give it to you as a heritage. I am the Lord. So what does that say? That the promised land belonged to him, but God didn't translate them from here to there. There was a period in between. They had to walk. They had to follow the instructions that God laid out to them. Some of them got tired of it. Some of them, you know, got this, that, or the other. And many of them didn't even make it to the promised land, yet God had given them a land, had, had promised them a land. And let me read again. And I will bring you into the land which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I will give it to you as a heritage. Amen. So God makes a promise to the Israelites while they were in bondage. While they were in bondage. Listen, there was a day we were in sin's bondage but he's made a promise to us. All who receive Jesus Christ as their savior, God said, I'm going to take them from there into the land that I have provided for them. But there's going to be some enemies in that land. And he told Israel, there's enemies in this land that I gave you. But what did he tell them to do? You go in there and drive every one of those enemies out. We have the power of the Holy Spirit on the inside of us today to drive out every, every everything, every disturbance, everything that the adversary, but just, just taking it, you know, nonchalantly, irreverently. Don't play with it. God's promised it to us, but guess what? He's given us steps that we are to take along the way. Building our spiritual house every day, digging deep and building it on the rock and doing the things that, uh, that embraces uh, our house with the protection of God, with the, uh, with the plan of God, and all that God has guaranteed or has provided for us as we build the house on a day-to-day -day basis. Guess what? More of God's blessings shows up at our door. More shows up at our door. More shows up at our door. God will even bring some things to your door that you didn't even ask him for. He'll bring things to your door that you were not uh, at that time expecting. He'll do it, why? Because you're following his steps, you're building the way he wants you to build, and he wants just to bless you above, over and above. He is able to do what? Exceedingly, abundantly above. Hallelujah. All that we can what? All that we can ask or think. God said, I'm going to do it exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you th say or think. That's what God wants to do for us today while we're building our spiritual house on a day-to-day -day basis. Amen. Praise God. Stand up with me this morning, if you would, please. Amen. And we're going to just give a shout to the Lord. We're going to thank God for the rock. He is the foundation of our house. He is the foundation of our house is built upon the rock. Jesus is the rock of our salvation. Yes, he is. So let's lift our hands and let's give him thanks and give him praise. 
Thank you so much for viewing the program with us today. I always appreciate you being there and viewing the program. Today we've talked about, or we are talking about, building a strong spiritual house. You know, the Bible says that we are the house of God. We are the temple of God. And you know, in this day that we live, uh, it is a lot of things going on and a lot of uh, situations and circumstances that just 10 years ago, eight years ago, we didn't have to deal with. Today, we do have to deal with it. Uh, and all of that coming from the outside in, and we're having to take some time to think about it. And so that goes to the importance of building your your spiritual house as strong as we can build it because the adversary is on the move. He's the Satan's doing just exactly what the scripture says he'll do. He's going to and fro and he's seeking and looking for those that he may devour or defeat. And so it's so vitally important that we keep our prayer life intact. We keep our praise life intact. We keep our faith operative and working in this hour and in this day in which we are living. We're looking, you know, for the rapture to take place. Signs of the time are, are around us every day, developing around us every day. So let's just always be mindful of building our spiritual house, our life, building it as strong as we can get it on a day-to-day -day basis. Let me pray with you before we leave the program today and just uh, lift you up and pray with you. Father, we pray for the people today. We thank you, Father, that wherever they're at at home or, or wherever they may have viewed the program, we pray for them. We pray, Lord, for those uh, that are stressed and they are anxious, have anxieties. We pray for them today. Lift them before you, Father, that you by your wonderful, mighty abilities and power to minister to them today. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. God bless. Thanks again. And uh, we'll see you next time right here on Victorious Living from Faith is a Victory Church in Nashville, Tennessee. You've been watching Victorious Living with Pastor Charles Cowan. It's our hope that today's message has ministered to the need you have in your life. If you would like to receive today's message in its entirety, please call 1-800-842-7896. Or if you're in the Nashville area, call 615-226-2145 and ask for the product number on the screen. Visit us online at victoriousliving.org. If you're ever in the Nashville area, come and worship with us. Sundays at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. From Pastor Cowan and the Congregation of Faith is the Victory Church, we'll be looking for you next time right here on Victorious Living.